The future of the national flag carrier up in the air as government makes an intervention to an industrial unrest. I'm Clint Watson. Stories ahead in the Bahamas tonight. A brand new living facility for training opens at Her Majesty's Prison. I'm Jared Higgs. I'll have all the details straight ahead in the Bahamas tonight. And the inaugural Popeye Bahamas Bowl is just hours away. The Bahamas Tonight, the national report starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. Bahamas Air pilots not showing up to work for the second day in their industrial unrest. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kendino Knowles. And I'm Charisma Robinson. Bahamas Air pilots turning up the heat and staying off the job once again after walking out of negotiations on Monday at the Department of Labor. Now government has moved in to rescue the national fly carrier's reputation and protect it from further financial loss. Clint Watson has the story. We expect normalcy by 3 o'clock, latest by tomorrow morning, with or without the pilots. With Bahamas Air pilots off the job for a second day, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister responsible for the national flag carrier, the Honorable Philip Davis, said the government has moved in to prevent further deterioration of an already fragile institution. We have put in uh, alternative measures to minimize the, the loss and damage to Bahamas Air, both to its fiscal line and its reputation, and it's now being executed. Labor Minister the Honorable Shane Gibson apologized for the matter reaching to this point. He said all of the issues except one were solved during their six months of negotiations. That outstanding issue? Increments. Minister Gibson said because of the state of the economy, they've been asking all unions to scale back, which he said they have agreed to, but now he said pilots have been stenching. For an airline heavily subsidized by government, Gibson said he could not see the rationale in their request, particularly since payroll at Bahamas Air takes up to 48% of the airline's revenue and 20% of that belongs to pilots alone. Uh, the pilot's increment is $1,700 a year to the bottom and $2,400 at the top. The union reportedly agreed to accept the first two years retroactive as a lump sum, equivalent to one year's increment, which would range from $3,400 to $5,000 each. We then came now to the last three years of the contract. We said to them that um, we would agree to pay half of the increment and add it on to their salary rather than the full increment just so we could uh, try and cut back on the amount of subsidy that we provide for Bahamas here. We thought it was, it was time for us to really see how we could manage the process better in terms of cutting back. And I guess for half increment, they just decided to leave everybody in the Bahamas stranded. Minister Gibson said the government is willing to talk to pilots, but not while they're involved in industrial action. I told the pilots, I said, listen here, go back to work. We can sit down, which was yesterday, and we can have this entire matter resolved. They decided no, they don't want to go back to work until we give them what they want. Bahamas Air has been using its contingency plan to continue operations and has been assisted by domestic carriers and international airlines that have been moving their passengers. Hopefully um, they, um, they won't put us in a position where we have to decide now at this time what to do with Bahamas Air because Bahamas Air is a burden on the taxpayers and it's been a burden for a long time and you know sometimes these types of things have to happen to, to force you into making the kind of decisions that under normal circumstances you wouldn't make. If they come to me right now and say, uh, Minister of Labor, uh, members are back to work. We want to sit down and negotiate right now at this moment. We can sit down and talk. And while we're not yet able to determine what the outcome of this matter will be, what we can say for sure on all parties' side is that there's definitely change coming to the national fly carrier. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Now, President of the Pilots Association, Captain Joe Moxie, says that his membership is not asking for any salary increase. Instead, all they want is increments. We are not being unreasonable at all. We have always been reasonable with the company in every regard. The company is offering us half increments for three years when we've already given up two years, which will be year 13 and 14. We have given that up in full. Only three years will be left in the contract, and they're offering half increments for the three years, which means we, for the entire five-year contract, the pilot body will receive one and a half increment. That is a slap in the face. We said, we'll give you the two years. That's not a problem. 
But the same as what BC got, give us the lump sum along with the three-year income added to the salary, and that was our position. Not being unreasonable at all. Uh, we do apologize to the public on this venture, but the bottom line is the pilots are really stressed out. They have had enough of this whole issue, and they are mentally drained by it. And under the regulations, it's not safe for them to be in an airplane in that state. The pilot strike at Bahamas Air and the fallout is being felt by frustrated passengers. Long delays and ruined vacation plans have passengers saying enough is enough. Cleopatra Murphy spoke with passengers at the arrivals and departure sections at Lyndon Pinlin International Airport today who called for the national airline to do better. Australian tourist Jane Denning says she will never book Bahamas Air again. This is a glimpse of the negative impact the Bahamas Air pilot strike could have on the country's number one industry, tourism. Denning and her family's flight was scheduled to leave Florida after 4 p.m. Monday, and after many delays, mounting frustrations drove her to alter her travel arrangements. The experience, she says, has soured her vacation. This morning we arrived at 6.30 a.m. at the airport to try and get on the first flight. The queue was already almost at the door. There's very little help, no one in charge, absolute chaos. Basically, we ended up just going and paying our own money to buy another air, air flight on American. The situation is similar for resident Vernice Forbes, who, like many others, milled the airport today, passing time. Forbes spent all day Monday at the Linden Pending International Airport, only to be informed at night the flight was cancelled. After more delays today, and having planned her vacation months in advance, she cancelled her trip. Oh, it was a waste of time. Ah, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to fly Bahamas Air again. Danica Bethel, who finally returned to NASA after a long day at the airport, vented her frustrations. Last night we were supposed to come on Bahamas Air, but our flight got cancelled. They took us to the hotel. They ain't give me no food vulture. I need all day, and that is ridiculous, and they need to do better because they ain't becoming. Marsha Butler says she was set to meet relatives flying in from Europe in Miami, and her plans have been thrown off. Kids are disappointed. I'm disappointed because I work long and hard planning for this trip, and... This is what is happening. These irate passengers join a long list of others whose plans the long delays have put a damper on. I mean, it's kind of upset, and I was hoping to be already in Orlando, but yeah, what can you say? I came with an attitude anyway that, you know, Bahamas is, is be a bit late, but now nah, this is, you know, extremely late. But I'm still doing better than those that who were here from yesterday and didn't get to travel till this morning, or some still here. Some passengers say they hope pilots and government can arrive at a peaceful resolution, but for now, their priority is making it to their final destination. Cleopatra Murphy, ZNS Network News. This segment of the news is brought to you by Shell Quality Fuels.